But let's turn to health care. The president, uh, in his radio address yesterday, took on the insurance industry and some of the studies that they have submitted this week to, uh, to challenge his version of reform. This is what he said. It's smoke and mirrors. It's bogus. And it's all too familiar. Every time we get close to passing reform, the insurance companies produce these phony studies as a prescription and say, take one of these and call us in a decade. Well, not this time. What's striking about this is that the insurance industry all along in this process has been the president's partner. That's what we've been led to believe. And now we have the president taking on the insurance industry. Is this a sign that he believes the insurance industry is on the verge of killing reform? Well, I think it's a sign of his frustration of that at the very last minute they would come up with a study that has been widely been debunked over the course of the last few days, including by the people who actually prepared the study. And at the same time, you have the Business Roundtable come out with a study by Hewitt that shows how costs are escalating and how the time is right now to take on this issue. So I think what you saw was the president express, expressing his frustration that at the last minute the insurance industry would try to potentially tank this bill. And it's not going to happen this time. And I think that the message that we've seen from the president and the huge momentum that is moving through Congress shows that the American people are ready for uh, health care reform and they're ready for it this year. And nothing's going to stop that. But you've got challenges from the insurance companies. You've got in the political middle on Capitol Hill concerns about the cost. Uh, and even from the left, this was the headline in Politico, Labor Chief Takes on the White House. This is uh, Gerald McEntee, the president of AFSCME, uh, which is uh, uh, government workers across the country. And he writes this in a USA Today uh, op-ed piece. McEntee said union workers have often chosen to accept lower wages in exchange for better and more costly health insurance. He said union members won't be afraid to remind politicians of that in next year's election. We worked for all these people. We worked for Obama. And what do we get for it? We not only don't get anything for it, we get a slap in the face. And the criticism is that the taxes for this health reform ultimately will hit the middle class. Listen, David, what we're, what we're uh, very cognizant here is that we have to reduce costs. We have to improve coverage. We've got to make affordable, quality health care for all Americans. Those are the basic parameters that the president set forth when we began, we began this process. It's hard. It's complicated. If this was easy, it would have happened under the five decades that there have been efforts for health care reform. But what we've seen right now is, for the first time in history, five committees have passed legislation. There's an agreement on 90 percent of what we're trying to accomplish here, and there's some momentum to move forward right now. So are there last-minute wranglings? Are there going to be people who are trying to maneuver? Sure there are. But I think that the momentum under President Obama is clearly moving forward. Will now, he push for a public option? before he signs any kind of reform? The president has made it clear throughout the process. He said it in his uh, speech uh, before Congress that he thinks that the public option is a right solution. He thinks it will enhance competition, and he thinks it will reduce costs, and it will give people choices. And he said that throughout the process. So but, he's a big believer in the public plan. But the question I'm asking plan. is, will he push for it and demand it here as the, in the final version of reform? He's pushed for it, certainly, but he's also realistic to say we've got to look at all options. He has said very clearly he thinks it's the best option, and we'll see what so happens. So he's not demanding that it's in there? He's not demanding that it's in there. He thinks it's the best possible choice. But I think, David, let's not underestimate how much progress we've made. The fact that there's agreement on so much means that we are right on the brink of delivering for the American people, and that's a positive sign for our country. But, you know, there's a lot of stalwart supporters of this president who look at health care reform in the context of other things that he promised in the campaign. And what do we see? A promise for universal health care? Well, you've got 17 million people who wouldn't be insured under this plan. A promise for a public option? Now you're saying he doesn't demand it. You know, the mantra of the campaign was, yes, we can. Has that become maybe? No, it has not. It has definitely become, yes, we can. If you look at the five bills that have been passed, they provide more um, more reassurance to the American people that they're going to have the kind of affordable health care, that they're going to reduce their costs, that they're not going to have to choose between paying their rent and paying for their health care, that they, if they have a pre-existing condition, they're going to be covered. If they want to go in and have all kinds of exams that will prevent illnesses, that they're going to be covered by that. There's so much in these bills that is going to benefit the American people that we've come so far and we can't lose sight of that. Are we there yet? Have we crossed the finish line? No. But under President Obama, we're absolutely committed to delivering on behalf of the American people. Before